what's up? And 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 it, that that still sticks with me. And every time I hear Shane, I, I'm way past the movie Shane when I talk about uh, Shane from Scale Trains. But um, Shane, what's up, brother? And and now let's cut over to Shane and let's see what's happening. I'm here with Drayton. And uh, we have a lot of exciting things to share. And also want to give a big shout out to the Virtual Rail Fan team. Uh, we're actually in studio at Virtual Rail Fan. They let us set up our trade show display. Believe it or not, we're just about a half an hour from where uh, Virtual Rail Fan is. And so uh, these guys have been really gracious and very helpful to allow us to be set up here and uh, having a lot of fun. And it's kind of neat to see the behind the scenes. And uh, we wanted to bring a little flavor of, a, of the trade show, right? This is a, a mini version of our trade show booth and uh, kind of give us a little bit of normalcy. It's, it's, uh, we really miss being in New England, except maybe the weather this year. Um, <laughs> you know, it's a little warmer in Southeast Tennessee, but uh, we're looking forward to seeing everyone next year. So we're gonna kick it off, uh, Drayton. And uh, do you wanna introduce the first product and then we'll tell everybody a little bit about it? Absolutely, so I am excited to announce the all new Rivet Counter N-Scale Greenbrier Gunderson Multimax freight car. Pretty amazing, Shane. So this one is a, a really highly requested car. You know, we're doing the Big Brother in HO scale, and uh, now we're going to bring it to N. And I'm going to pick it up here in my hand, and I'll make sure I keep it close so that we don't uh, move it around a lot on camera. This is a car that the N scale markets really asked us to do over and over again, and so we're really excited to bring it. This car, if, if you're a modern modeler, which a lot of N-Scalers are, this is a 2014 to today car. Uh, very common, you'll see it a lot. Uh, you name the railroad, every major class one in North America, be it Burlington Northern, Santa Fe, BNSF, of course, CSX, CP, CN, uh, UP has them, Norfolk Southern has them, and uh, you'll see them all the time mixing the trains. And what's really cool is, this gives you some variety in your, in your auto rack trains. The big spotting feature you'll see these cars have these large logo panels, and a lot of times the railroads will put their big logos on them. It really helps it stand out. For BNSF and Norfolk Southern, they put their logos actually on a, on a uh, flat panel that's part of the corrugated siding. All the other railroads are going to have them out here. And, of course, being a rivet counter model, we do all that railroad road number era specific detail. Four different car bodies. Uh, you've got an early, an intermediate, a late, and a current version. You've got a couple of different styles of indoors. This one, of course, is the later indoor. It's got an angle to it. The early indoors have kind of a uh, step look to them. You'll also see some of the detail on the ends. You'll see like uh, stirrup steps here. You've, there's three different types of end configurations. You've got stirrup steps. Um, you've got stirrup steps with grab irons you got on the end, and then there's another version of grab irons on the sides. There's also three different ladder types. Uh, this, there's a four-run ladder, and then there's three-run ladders mounted short and high. And then, of course, uh, you've got all the underframe detail and uh, all the plumbing up underneath. You've got, of course, the body-mounted trucks with the metal wheels. You've got body-mounted couplers. And, uh, and, of course, you've also got the coupler cut levers there on the end. Uh, also on these cars, you know, they're uh, a really common car. So if you have, like, our uh, Tier 4 Jeevo in N-Scale or you've got the uh, Dash 9 in N-Scale, these will be perfect mated up to those cars. Definitely. So Shane, as you mentioned, this car is requested all the time on Facebook. We mm -hmm. see your comments um, and, and we definitely keep track of all of the requests that we get in on social media. And definitely the Multimax is one of the most requested end scale cars that, that we have. And But one of the things I wanted to ask you about, Shane, was the development process. How long has this car been in development? Just to give our viewers an understanding of how long it takes to bring a model train to market. Well, that's a great question. So Drayton and I had the opportunity to uh, visit our factory uh, in China, been over a year ago now. We were there yeah. in November of uh, 19, and we're actually working on a brand new video. It's part one of how model trains are made, kind of like Star Wars, yeah. going backwards. <laughs> and uh, in that video, we're going to be showing something, some of the CAD work. Uh, when we were there, what we do is we start with the HO model, and then we and the and you'll actually see the CAD work where the uh, design engineer is uh, figuring out which things will scale down and look right, and find, figuring out which things won't taking some parts off some things just won't scale correctly yeah. uh, and uh, so we saw that those drawings in uh, that was in November of 19 yeah. and uh, literally this car the the deco sample arrived in our office on uh, let's see that was Monday it afternoon was Monday. yeah yeah so <laughs> so you can see that it's it's that close we only have one car to display yeah, um, yeah. The factory is actually working on all the deco samples, so or decoration samples. So we'll have all those. We'll see those in late February. 
Uh, and as we talk about that too in all the different models, one thing that's really good to bring up too is we're offering quantity by pricing um, because you see these cars mixed in really long trains and uh, there's some pretty big savings on that uh, and it's a great way then to, to buy more cars, essentially buy more, save more. Yeah, so, so uh, consumer pricing one to five cars is $44.99. Um, consumer pricing for 6 to 11 cars is $42.99 and uh, consumer pricing for 12 plus cars is $39.99. Pretty awesome right out of the box. Yeah, and that price point is really competitive with other auto racks in the market so folks can start to flush out their uh, multi -mac or their auto rack train. Yeah, you can basically run unit trains now and uh, as Shane mentioned, one of the things that you'll see in that video is they literally take the HO car and just completely scale it down and they do all kinds of tests and simulations so you can actually see how these cars will handle curves in a computer simulation it's really amazing the amount of engineering mm -hmm. and the same rivet counter quality that you're used to in HO scale that is what you're going to get in the N scale Greenbrier Gunderson Multimax. So a couple quick questions um, uh, that we uh, that we think here uh, folks might want to know uh, that we'll hear a lot about are the panels see-through. Um, one of the things about this car, it's what's called an anti-graffiti car. This is one of the really new modern auto racks. Even in the HO models, the holes are really so small that you have to be in the exact right light to be able to see in, through the real car. And it's pretty rare that you can do that. Um, so in N-Scale, when you scale those holes down, there's no way to see through. So what we did is these panels are actually plastic, uh, but they're very finely detailed. As you can see, um, we'll be posting product video here soon. Products going live on our website as we speak. And then the other thing we'll probably get questions on are about the indoors. Um, the indoors do not open. Uh, one thing that you'll find is these doors are what are, uh, are instead of being like a clamshell door, like a traditional auto rack, these are a bifold door. And the idea is they seal really tight and they protect it from people getting in and vandalizing the cars. And that mechanism would be very, very delicate. And because you can't see in the car anyway, we don't have that feature on the on the HO or the in-scale model. Yeah, basically the Multimax is probably about 30 to 40 years worth of engineering that Greenbrier came to. It, it, they, wanted, they wanted to create a car that was easier to load vehicles into, but also a car that protected the automobiles on the inside. And uh, that's beautifully captured here on the Multimax. Awesome. Well, should we talk about our second release? Yeah, I'm pretty excited about this one. All right, let's reach under the table. All right. It's like a magic trick. I'll hand them up to you, Shane. <laughs> so this is our second release. This is a Kit Classics freight car. And uh, we've been a little, you know, we've been wanting to add to the Kit Classics line, and we've been getting to the point now where, where uh, we're getting ahead on a few things. And I'm going to pull this over. we got a little bit more room here. Uh, this is a CB&Q Havlick Shops 52 foot 6 inch gondola. This was built by the Burlington in the late 60s. Uh, very unique car and uh, some of the things that you'll notice about this car that really set it apart from other gondolas is you look at the, like the top cord, it has a square profile and it runs between the two ladders on the car or the, I should say the grab irons on the ends of the car. And then if you look down low on the sill, it actually has like a flat plate. And that plate uh, runs bet just beyond the two uh, final ribs on the car. So there's a, uh, it's a pretty unique car, but it's a pretty common size. It's 52 foot, six inch. And because of that, we're gonna put a lot of paint schemes on it. Granted, they're not quite accurate for this car, but when you look at the price point that we're trying to maintain, yeah. You know, we're still way under $20 yeah. uh, selling price. And the car still has a ton of detail. You know, that was one of the things we heard a lot about on the box car. And you'll notice, like, underneath that sill, there's going to be small uh, rivet detail all underneath, uh, all along the sill. When you look inside the car, you'll see all the board detail, and you'll see the rivets on the boards. The end of the car has all the corrugations, just like the prototype. You've got the crossover platform. The, um, the grabs are very finely molded on the car. And one of the things, too, that we did that's a little bit different, I don't know if we'll be able to see on camera, but you'll be able to see in the, in the, on our website, actually came up with a uh, underframe plumbing that is um, a separate piece. Yeah. And it gives it more of a 3D look on this car. And then uh, one thing, too, when I picked it up, it reminded me of the car's really heavy. Yeah, it uh, is. It's um, 
I mean, I, it's probably a little bit beyond Intermari specs. It's a heavy car, so it'll track well. Yeah. And like all of our uh, Kit Classics car, of course, you've got metal wheels, you've got knuckle couplers, and super simple to assemble. Probably take you less than 10 minutes to put the car together. So Shane, this is actually our second Kit Classics car. And for folks who are unfamiliar with our brands, could you go into that a little bit so they're a little more familiar with Kit Classics and the rest of our brands? So we have four brands. And uh, the idea for Kit Classics, uh, you know, if you harken back to the old blue box days, the old shake the box kits. That's the whole idea of kit classics. Simple to build, uh, value price point, and uh, not a lot of detail, but very finely rendered detail. Yeah. And uh, we tend to we tend to take some liberty with paint schemes, right? Because yeah. it helps uh, keep those price points down. For this particular car, we're at seventeen ninety nine. The box car, I think, is still hanging around fourteen ninety nine. And then our goal is uh, probably once a year for the next couple of years, we'll add a car to the the kit classics line. I don't really see this getting beyond maybe five or six cars, just because. The more detail you add, yeah. the higher the cost goes, and it gets it close to what our next brand, which is the operator brand. Operator brand is for people who like to run trains, uh, like realistic detail, uh, aren't as concerned about having all the railroad road number specific detail. And uh, the great thing about that then is it uh, allows us to hit a good value price point. Most of our operator freight cars in that $25 to $30 range. Locomotives are going to, non-sound, are going to start around 100 bucks, $105, and then we're going to get to the, uh, uh, up to the uh, um, uh, locomotives with DCC and sound. We're now including the ESU-5 decoder, so that's bumped the price point up. Still hanging under $200, though, for an operator locomotive. Next brand is Rivet Counter. That's our most popular brand. Uh, rivet counter locomotives, uh, or freight cars, I'm sorry, I have all that railroad, road number, air specific details just like the locomotives. Freight cars are going to be in that, you know, probably around $40, $45 for most cars. Locomotives are going to start about $175. Uh, and then later today, we're actually going to announce our next museum quality locomotive. It's pretty exciting. Yeah, and uh, museum quality is our top of the line brand. The world's kind of morphed since we announced the Big Blow Turbine. Back when we announced the Big Blow, you know, class lights and ground lights and interior lights. Really and, unheard of. Yeah, I mean, it really hadn't been done to that point. Now they become the industry standard. Uh, a couple of things we'll kind of preview on the locomotive today um, that, uh, you know, you're going to see uh, ground lights on both sides of the locomotive. You're going to see walkway lights, uh, three walkway lights. You're going to see... Um, well, I might give away too much away if I start talking about class lights well, and ditch lights. But as I like to say, that thing is lit. Yeah. There's over 30 LEDs in some of this uh, on this locomotive that we'll be showing later this afternoon. So the only real difference now in museum quality are a few lighting effects and between museum quality and rivet counter. A few lighting effects, the frog clank, curve uh, the curve squeal, and then, of course, um, the packaging is a little bit more premium yeah, on yeah. the uh, museum quality brand. Plus, you still get the... Uh, the museum quality pin and of course the magnifying glass so you can see the difference. So if you're new to our company now that you're a lot more familiar with our brands, going back to the Kit Classic brand, uh, one of the nice things about the, the Kit Classics car is that you can actually store the model back in the original packaging and it'll actually store the model safely. You know, one of the things that scale trains we, we, we try to strive for is taking the elements from our childhood. You know, Shane, back in the day, you had all those Thanks blue box. Thanks for making me sound old. I <laughs> yeah, appreciate it. You had all those blue box kits, and you'd, you'd build your cars, but the package wouldn't store them. And so you'd have broken couplers, broken trucks. But the packaging here with these Kit Classics car keeps them safe. And plus, you've got all this nice detail on the underside of the car. So that's going to be protected by the packaging. That's a big deal. Yeah. So that really wraps it up for the announcements, but... Uh, we got some footage to show some folks. Oh, do we have some footage? Yeah, so um, Mark McAllister, you might know him from product support. If you've ever had a problem with any of our products, you know, we try our best to take care of you. And uh, Mark's the guy that you probably have talked to on the phone. And he's live right now from uh, Ed Painter's house, and he's actually got some more samples of the Kit Classics gondolas, and uh, you'll be seeing them here shortly. Thanks, Shane. Great. And Mark McAllister here with product support at scaletrains.com. We're here in beautiful northwest Georgia with our good friend, Ed Painter. We're here with, at Edge Railroad today talking about our brand new Kit Classics CB&Q Havelock Shops gondola car. We've got all six road names represented today, but first, let's talk to Ed and have him tell us a little bit about his railroad. Ed? Well, I moved to Cahut, Georgia about three years ago, four years ago, and I uh, built, a, built a new home and uh, built a 1900 square foot basement in the home specifically for model railroad. Um, 
I modeled from 1964 to 1982, uh, Norfolk and Western and the Southern are the two primary railroads that I model. Um, I have a lot of other railroads beyond that, but those are the two primary ones. Uh, the name of the railroad is the Virginia Piedmont, Appalachian, and Western, which represents where I'm from in Virginia. Um, we've got it to the point where it runs pretty well. Uh, we've got a lot more work to do. We're going to have a lot of coal mines on this railroad, uh, coal-fired power plants, uh, coke ovens, uh, paper mills, all kinds of things that are fun to switch and, and operate cars in and out of. So it's going to be fun. Uh, Need to get back to work on it here sometime soon too. It sounds so. like a lot of fun to operate. It is. It's going to be Today great. we've got all six of our Kit Classics gondola cars here. We've got CBNQ, Norfolk and Western, Conrail, Chicago Northwestern, Sioux Line, and Burlington Northern. What we got on the point of the train today? We're going to run these around. Tell us about the locomotive. And we've got a, one of my several scale trains, SD 40s dash twos, SD 40 dash twos. This is a Norfolk and Western 6000 series unit. Uh, Beautiful locomotive, uh, great detail, sound is good, uh, just an excellent model. Uh, All right, well let's get it started up and we'll take a look at these gondola cars while we're doing that. So the CB&Q built these in their Havelock shops. So they're 52 foot, six inch uh, payload dimensions on the inside. We've got quite a few here. Ed, do you think you're going to add some of these to your... Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going to definitely get a Burlington and at least one North and Western, perhaps a couple of North and Westerns, but they're really nice cars. Uh, gondolas are, you know, especially if you model right parts of the country, part of NNW, the Wabash, Nickel Blade, a lot of steel mills, all stuff like that, so you saw a lot of gondolas. These are great cars. It's the first addition to our Kit Classics line since the boxcar came out several years ago. Right now, the locomotive sounds like it's ready to go, so we're going to take a spin around the railroad. Take a look at our cars. Ed, thanks for having us over today to show off our brand new Kit Classics Gondola Gar here on your railroad. We can't wait to come back and visit your railroad again and see what you've done. And we'll have more announcements later, but right now we're going to go back to Shane and Drayton in the control room. Well, thanks, Mark and Ed. We really appreciate you taking the time this morning to show us the Kit Classics Gondola in action. And of course, we appreciate Ed letting us use his train layout. As you can see, Ed's got a really big railroad, and actually later today we'll be showing the museum quality uh, announcement on that railroad too. So Drayton, uh, we've got a couple more minutes here, and uh, we've had a few folks, uh, and there's been some questions online, and if you'd like to post your questions, we might not get them to them in, the, in this segment, but uh, we'll have another segment later today, so you're welcome to post those online. One thing we did get some questions on, and we really didn't plan on talking about it, but there's some of the products that are behind us. Yeah, definitely. And, and we'll start on your side. Uh, of course, the uh, the brand new uh, Beth Gon Coal Porter or Beth Gon uh, Coal Gondola. This is the uh, Conrail G52X and in rivet counter. And uh, there's like 24 different road numbers plus a gray car that's coming uh, available with two different loads that you can add on to those. Those are going to be here uh, this spring and uh, also doing them in the operator brand and uh, the, the course the big difference there is in the rivet counter brand you get all the separately applied detail whereas in the operator brand you can add those details 
Uh, Drayton set the operator car there on the table. That's actually the rivet counter. That's, oh yeah, I'm sorry. That's the Connery actually only painted two cars gray, and we decided to do one of them. And we're really grateful for the uh, photography that we had in order this to make this car. Over. All right. The other thing that uh, we've got up high is the uh, the new ES44s. These are actually supposed to go on the boat within the next week, so we'll be having those in March. This will be the first run of the regular road names. Uh, and uh, as you can see, these are all the uh, early samples that, that have come in, have all that railroad road number, era specific detail that you become accustomed to, everything like the NS high headlight. Um, you've got... Uh, um, Front and rear ditch lights, too. Yeah, on the NS. Uh, although we, of course, went to new lighting effects, too. We've got walkway lights on those as well, as well as ground lights. And then over here on this side, um, up at the top are the, is the next run of the Tier 4 Jeevo or the ET44. Uh, we're doing the Wabtec version. Uh, Wabtec really, they never made this particular one, but in all their marketing materials when they acquired GE, they had mocked up this particular locomotive. We thought it looked really cool in the red, gray, and black. Kind of looks like our colors, maybe that's what yeah. we thought was cool. <laughs> and uh, so we did that locomotive, and then of course we're doing the CSX Georgia Road. One of the things we're going to do on the Georgia Road models, we're going to donate a portion of those proceeds to Kentucky Steam. Uh, and so there'll be another donation coming there soon. And the next shelf down, within the next week or so, will be the new wa next water tender shipment. We are sold out of the Jim Adams and the Joe Jordan, but we do still have some of the silver water tenders. The silver water tenders, those are kind of unique in the fact that uh, in the early 70s, UP placed those all around the system, and they would have diesel fuel, sometimes fuel oil, and they would essentially use them where they could do remote fueling. And then those eventually became uh, the steam turb or the, the uh, uh, tenders for the steam program. And then the SD45s on the next two shelves, those will come in also at the same time as the, uh, as the water tenders. They're on the way, be here in about a week or so. Uh, both rivet counter and operator, including the uh, N&W and the bicentennial units. And then 4785 hoppers, this is the next run that'll be coming uh, later this spring. So a little bit of everything, uh, a little overview of what's behind us. And then uh, we've got a special guest that we're going to bring in here in just a moment. Uh, as, you, as you guys might know, <laughs> we have a new resident in the neighborhood. And uh, so we're going to bring this person in. I think you guys will all recognize him when he comes around here. Come on in. We'll put you, we'll put you in the middle. Kind of a rose between two thorns. <laughs> I'll take it. So for those of you guys who don't know, this is James Wright. James uh, relocated to uh, southeast Tennessee. I wasn't supposed to disclose that. I did that back in August, though, <laughs> and uh, so I kind of messed up on that. But uh, James is in the neighborhood now, and we figured we might have a couple of extra minutes here at the end of our segment, so we thought we'd bring James in, let him share what he's got going on with his YouTube channel. Well, the YouTube channel is expanding into many different scales. Uh, if you guys haven't heard of the channel, it's YouTube.com forward slash JLWII2000. And on the channel, you'll see lots of reviews of different products and then eventually a layout again, Shane, if I can find a house here in Tennessee, which has been a rough <laughs> Housing has been tough. Yeah, yeah, it has. And then when you try to find a basement in the topography of <laughs> East, Tennessee, East Tennessee, it's even tougher. Yeah. So we've been a few months into a house search, but hopefully we can find a nice expansive layout. Uh, you know, Ed Painter's layout that you guys saw earlier is something that gives me some inspiration yeah, yeah. Uh, to find that much space, uh, but it's kind of hard, and we may end up looking at building it after a while if that doesn't work. Yeah. Um, but on the channel, you'll find lots of different reviews for now, and even G-Scale, which is a little hard when you're dealing on basically a picnic table wow, for yeah. the size. <laughs> yeah. Um, but there's also been a lot of Scale Trains products. We looked at the um, man, I can't even think of Pride and Service Pride units and service recently, units, yeah. CSX units. A couple uh, Dash 9s, too. Which I mentioned is also a lot of people are kind of breezing over this fact, but that's your first Tier 3 Jeevo locomotive, yep. and it gives us a good sense of what we're going to see in Tier 3 Jeevo units if you guys decide to do other paint schemes, which would make sense if you did. Well, that's what's over your shoulder <laughs> there on the right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. So it's hard to keep track of all the product, you know, industry-wide. It's just flying, and... You know, people that say the hobby is struggling, it's just not true. There's so much in the hobby, mm -hmm. so many new announcements, and manufacturers like Scale Trains that are always pushing the envelope, coming up with new products. I like to see new products, you know, things that haven't been tooled before, things that haven't been released before, or things that haven't been released with a great amount of, of uh, detail 
or some of the more technology prone things that we have now, like ESU low sound, ditch lights uh, that flash, things that 10, 15 years in the hobby yeah. ago, you wouldn't be able to see. So yeah, uh, it's great to see those items. So you can see those items on my channel. You may see some rail fanning come back in there, but occasionally, because there's so much great rail fanning here, like um, Norfolk Southern Action and CSX Action, uh, and my railroad is going to reflect that as well when we find a place to build. So it's going to have a little more NS and CSX representation, you know, on the layout. So that's kind of what's going on on my channel. And then I got some questions for you on your product, Shane, because we talked about the auxiliary tenders, but I don't think I was aware that these are coming out. Are those, you want to talk about that a little bit? The are silver they, water tenders? Yeah, silver water tenders. I saw those mm -hmm. earlier and I was like, I must have missed that. Well, yeah, James, so. there's always a silver lining. <laughs> <laughs> well, the silver water tenders were maintenance. Fun central. Yeah, it's fun watch, working yeah. with Drayton. <laughs> um, so the silver water tenders, they were maintenance water tenders. They were painted in the traditional UP maintenance scheme back in the early 70s, and they were line side around several different areas, uh, often in remote areas that they could use for as a fuel tender. Okay. Uh, so they might have had gasoline or their diesel fuel or whatever they might need for that particular area. And then those eventually end up becoming the uh, the uh, steam excursion tenders. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I missed that announcement. So looks like another... Well, don't worry, James. We're accepting pre-orders now. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and another silver lining is if you model a fake short line railroad like myself and you want to have a, an interesting fuel facility, you can add those cars, you can repaint them, or you can even patch them, and they'll look great on your layout. So like Shane was saying, if you have a layout that's like in Idaho or Montana, somewhere way off the beaten path, those cars would be great additions to the yard, because the fuel trucks can just come in, load them up, and then you've got fuel for several weeks, if not months. So one thing too, James, while you're here, you're going to hang around. I think we're going to shoot some video for your channel that you'll be posting tomorrow. Yes. So if we miss any highlights on the things we're talking about today, maybe you can uh, help us remember that as we as we chat. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, uh, I'll have a post tomorrow on my channel of all the announcements, kind of recapped into their own video for uh, all the announcements from Virtual Rail Fan here. So since yeah. you guys are close, you guys get to benefit a little bit from me bothering you to <laughs> to crash your party everywhere. Well, I'll tell you what, James, uh, i got to give him big kudos. Uh, there, he lives near one of my favorite restaurants, and he brought us a <laughs> pecan pie not long ago. Did you bring one today? No. Oh, so See, disappointed. you should have told me. Uh, so um, so your, your next big, you're still doing um, reviews, though, even though you don't have a layout. Yep. Yeah, I've got essentially a picnic table, one of those collapsible tables. I'm basically spending a little more time on testing and and things like that so you guys can see more of the testing aspect of the product so we do a little more NMRA compliance um, a few other tests like radius testing I'll be incorporating to spend a little more time there since we can't do really run buys and eventually a home will come uh, you know it was a multiple stage process just yeah. to get out of here to get here retiring from the military and then finding a, a second career here getting settled and then starting the house hunt really seriously. Um, we started it back in spring, but it was more of like being uber picky. And now we're just like, give me a layout space and give me a three car garage and I'm good. Um, so we're, we're in the process of looking, hopefully it speeds up. But in the meantime, there's a lot of testing and real tight shots because there's not a lot of space that you can see yeah. the products up close in. And I'll, I try to mix it up a little bit too. I'll put some other products or other, um, aspects of model railroading online such as like i said rail fanning um occasionally we'll go out to ed painters and we should probably shoot a video out there and yeah then, definitely and you have a huge youtuber here that you know we'll have to collaborate on some some things as well maybe yeah. head up to kentucky steam or something so. yeah definitely all right well gentlemen we're we're coming up to the last little bit of, of our uh segment today want to uh, thank everyone who has been tuning in and uh, watching. Uh, hopefully you're as excited uh, if you're an N-Scale uh, modeler about the Multimax. If you're an HO person, uh, HO modeler, you're, you're uh, liking the gondola. Um, we will be back a little bit later this afternoon. We'll be announcing our next museum quality locomotive. We're pretty excited about this one. This one, uh, you know, there's been a lot of speculation. Is it going to be a West Coast locomotive since the first one was West Coast? <laughs> you know, could it be somewhere else? And uh, I, I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised. This, yeah. this particular release, uh, 
Um, you know, maybe we'd give them a little hint. It is a little more unique, right? I mean, the tagline is legendary locomotives. So with legendary locomotives, there's a lot of opportunities out there. Um, it could be steam, could be diesel, but, you know, we talked about lighting effects, so that might kind of hint towards a, a diesel locomotive. So we'll be talking about that uh, later today, and then, of course, we'll be back tomorrow. Uh, and then tomorrow we have a huge announcement, um, an industry announcement that we're really excited to share. James will have that on his uh, broadcast as well later um, tomorrow. And I uh, want to say thanks so much to the uh, team uh, up north and John and his group for all they're doing to help put this show on. I want to thank James for joining us, uh, Drayton for his time. He was up all night editing video. And of course, the Virtual Rail Fan team. We're going to send it back now to the Virtual Rail Fan folks and uh, the next segment. Thanks so much for tuning in.